Okay, so this is a demonstration on how to clean a, the Logitech Harmony 1100 remote. I've done many reviews of the 1000 and the 1100 with setups, lighting, all sorts of details. One thing I haven't touched base on is actually cleaning it. Now, I know many people would think I don't really need to clean my remote, but if this is your main theater remote, you're going to be eating food in front of your TV, this and that, your grimy hands will probably get all over the screen and it'll do stuff like this. It'll look like there'll be crap in the corner. Um, I know my personal activity button got a lot of food in there and now it's like kind of hard to push down. So I'm going to go over some basic tips, tools, and basically go over how to open this remote, safely clean it, and put it back together. Now first things first is you should always remove the battery before working on things and to actually open it you're going to have to anyway. What you're going to need is you're going to need a precision screwdriver set just like this that has all the little bits. Um, all you need is two types of Phillips head uh, drivers and um, this is what they look like. So here are the two bits. There's a small one and a larger one, but I, I know it's hard to see in the picture, but you can get an idea of the size maybe by me holding them, but that's basically what you need. You need a small one and a larger one. All right, so the first things first is um, I would take a damp paper towel, and if you wanted to wipe the uh, external screen, you can only use water, never use any harsh chemicals or abrasives. But this is just to get over, like, basically the overall uh, junk off the screen. Any buttons. Just don't make sure it's too wet, because the wetter it is, the worse off you're going to be. You really don't want water getting into your LCD screen at all, trust me. Just be very careful. Alright, so after that's clean, uh, you can flip it over. Now to open this remote, I'm going to show you how to do it. There's uh, the battery door. You can remove that, set that aside. Now there's going to be three screws. And I'll show you where they are. There's going to be a screw here, screw here, and screw here. And then there's one screw right next to the USB port underneath the dust cover. All right, in taking the large screwdriver bit, um, I'm gonna actually now remove these. And just take your time, don't rush. Make sure you keep your workspace organized. Um, and definitely remember which screws go where. This is a little easier just because there's only four screws holding this remote together. So after they come out, set them aside, and then turn the remote around and where the other screw was located, replace your bit with a smaller bit, and take out this screw. set that aside. You can notice how there's uh, two different size screws here, a small one and larger ones. Just keep in mind that there's only one screw that goes over here by the USB jack. And then you can close this cover back up. Now, here's the tricky part. There's clips that hold this remote together. There are clips all around this remote. So what I realized how I got this remote apart is very very carefully I just took like a flathead bit something thin let's see okay take a flathead bit and I don't know if you can see it but there's grooves that hold the uh, bad the battery cover in place here and here. Um, you'll notice that now taking the screws out, it's really loose or looser. So you can almost like put a flathead in there and lift up. 
and in doing so you're going to be able to release some of the tension. So what I do is I take a, you can take like a card or anything, slip it in there as you're pulling it apart. So as I'm yanking or yanking or spreading the crack apart here, I can insert a card right at the edge to hold it in place. And as I slide it down, it should gently start releasing the clips. You don't want to use too much brute force with this because you could damage the clips that keep this remote together. So there it goes. Now I'm just working around the edges. Just take your time with this. If it's not budging, don't force it because you could damage it. Just take your time. The clips will give. Alright, now I got it all separated. Now, just letting you know, this little silver part fell out of the remote. It's like a little padded foam piece. It almost has like a metallic finish on it. I'll let, if the stuff falls out of the remote, I'll let you know where it goes. It's pretty self-explanatory once you open it. Now, when you open this remote, be careful because parts could fall out. I would advise laying the screen flat down. Now, as you lift up, there's going to be a ribbon cable connecting the LCD to the main logic board. So, to lift up, the gold contacts is where you want to open it like a book. And it opens like that. Once you have it open like this, you can lay it out like a book. Just be very sensitive not to damage this ribbon cable here. This little pad that fell out, you notice there's one here, down in this corner. The other pad actually just falls into this slot right here. There's actually a little slot and groove that keeps it in place right here. And that actually makes contact with this gold contact over here. Same with this one. Alright. So right here is um, the contacts for the volume and everything like that. You can leave this in place. Here are the keypads, so if you wanted to clean them off, if there's a lot of grime in there, what you can do is you can take a cotton swab and rubbing alcohol and just wipe around the edges here where dirt can get in. My buttons are not dirty here. What, my, what button is really dirty is the activities button, which is located right here. Now if you can see, there's like a lot of junk inside the hole there and that's what I plan on cleaning out. Now please note stuff has also fallen out on this side. There's a little dust cover that goes to the USB port. There's a little hook here that holds it, for, holds it in place while, so it's not falling out this little hook. And there's a little channel right here. And you can just kind of place it back into the channel. Try to keep it in place. Just make sure it's in place when you put this back together. Now I'm going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and don't drench it, just a little bit and I'm going to clean the inside of this hole because it is really bad. So I'm going to just swab it down a little bit on both sides and then take the dry side of the Q-tip and twist it back and forth so I don't have excess moisture in the remote. Alright, and I'll do the same to the button. I'll wipe it down on each side, trying to get all the grime off. Just be careful not to rip the button or anything. The button is very, very delicate. 
Alright? Then just make sure the activities button is facing the right way when you place it in. It should seat, set the seat there perfectly. Make sure all the components are in. Make sure the logic board is seated neatly. This is screwed in so you shouldn't have a problem. Okay. Just making sure everything else looks good. Alright. Now, while we have it open, I'll just show you a few things since uh, not many people usually crack these things open. But you can see the IR sensors here. Uh, this is the thing that actually sends the IR commands out. Now, you'll notice there's two of them. They do that on purpose so when you send a signal out, it actually gets sent out omnidirectional. So you have a good chance of hitting your electronics if one's to the left and one's to the right. Uh, the IR extender kind of uses the same thing but with like four or five of them. Over here is your receiver for the IR so it can learn. This is your USB jack. It's located underneath. And your contacts for your button. And behind the button pad is where your battery goes. Alright, so we're going to close this up. Please note, when closing it, I would advise doing it the opposite way. Make sure you just close it this way because these parts can fall out along with your button keypad. So just close it up like so. And then what I would do is I would start on the USB side and press with firm force. You'll hear snaps like that. And then just work around on each side. And eventually they'll all snap back into place. But make sure they are all snapped before replacing any screws. After they're all back, you can test the button. That button works perfectly now, like when I first got it. Awesome. Now just replace the three large screws in the holes here. Just be careful they don't fall into the battery compartment. Make sure they're nice and tight. Just make sure uh, and just make sure you don't like accidentally tighten them too much. All right. And then the last screw, which is the tinier screw. Close that back up, replace the battery, put the cover back on, and now the remote's going to boot, boot back up. And that's all there is to it, to cleaning your Logitech Harmony remote. I would advise doing this if it does get dirty, if buttons start sticking. Uh, it's not that hard. Um, you've made a lot of money in investing on the flagship model of the remote. Um, take care of it and this is a good way of taking care of it yourself if you have any questions on cleaning tips or any other ideas um, that might be benefit other people um, let me know if you ever spill anything on your remote the first thing you should always do is remove the battery and place the device in a container of rice that'll help extract out any of the um, liquids and stuff and hopefully it should come back to life so Here's a video of cleaning the Logitech 1100 remote. Thanks for watching.